If you can get this done, you've got the one thing that everybody in the world wants. It was an all-out race to light up the night. It opened up the world. It took improvisation. Those things went out the window. Cunning. He was an extraordinarily shrewd businessman. The inventor of the age, the Napoleon of invention. And determination. And the number of things they've tried is absolutely astonishing. He had faith. He did. The Battle of the Bulb and the war that followed. Westinghouse is going to kill somebody. How they built the light bulb. Bing. The light goes on. I'm Stuart Varney, and this is American Built. Babe Ruth hit more home runs than anyone before him. And he also struck out more. Milton Hershey watched three companies go down the drain before he made chocolate history. Failure is a key ingredient of success, and no one understood that better than the man who came up with the light bulb. It's really hard for uh, modern people to understand just how dark the world was before the electric light came along. The sheer amount of effort to get a tiny little amount of light was almost overwhelming. In the 19th century, the world found a new way to light the night, gas. If you've got a candle, you've got a tiny little area of the flame that's giving off the light. But if you have gas, you can create a fan. And that fan is spreading out, so now that lit area is a little greater. Of course, gas lamps were less than ideal. And it was dangerous. And so, although we have unfortunate home fires today, it was nothing compared to what people dealt with. There was danger of fire. There was also danger of being suffocated to death uh, from the gas if you didn't turn it off properly. So British chemist Humphrey Davy came up with a safer alternative, the arc light. Arc lights are uh, very brilliant lights created by putting two carbon points a little apart from each other, sending a charge through them, and there's a spark gap where that spark creates a big light. But arc lights were a little rough on the eyes. They were very bright and they were blinding, really. They're utterly impractical for the home. It proved the concept that electricity could light the world, but it was absolutely infeasible in terms of changing the world. So the brightest minds tested a dimmer idea, the incandescent lamp. In an incandescent lamp, electricity would pass through a piece of material called a filament, creating just enough heat to make it glow, but not so much heat that it would burn up. Incandescent lighting was seen as uh, a potential way of bringing electric light indoors, but this was a difficult thing to do. There had been 40 years of people trying to uh, develop and patent incandescent lights, and nobody had successfully created a, a light that could be used commercially. They could make them work, they couldn't make them last for any significant amount of time. One American took up the challenge, Thomas Edison. He's a young boy uh, out in Ohio and then in Michigan watching the wagons come through to open up the West. He doesn't have the advantage of a great education, but he, he just sees something. He's very perceptive. But Edison is one of the key inventors of the post-Civil War telegraph industry. He took opportunities. They were in front of him and he took them. He wasn't afraid of failure. The phonograph brought Edison fame and increasing willingness of people to invest in what he was doing. Edison's genius was that he not only was an inventor of remarkable imagination, but he was also an extraordinarily shrewd businessman. He's called the inventor of the age, the Napoleon of invention, and most importantly, the wizard of Menlo Park. Menlo Park, New Jersey. Here, Edison built more than a state-of-the-art lab. He built a first-rate team. He starts with a very small staff, two experimenters, three machinists. But over time, that quickly grows. It's everything from people who have a scientific training, um, craft training, machine shop training. With a number of people, they can work very rapidly to develop, test, and modify technology. That is probably his single best invention. 
is taking a chance on bringing all these different people who were from all different countries together, and it made them stronger. And that's really typically the American way, right? Edison challenged his team to build an affordable incandescent bulb that would last. And he was shrewd enough not to start from scratch. His approach, once he decided that uh, electric lighting was something that he wanted to pursue, was to literally look at what was already out there. I mean, why reinvent the wheel, right? His end game was much more than a bulb. That's the difference with Edison also. He isn't just making a better light bulb. He's creating a system of electrical distribution that is more affordable than what was out there before. Edison wanted to generate electricity, deliver it, and harness it into a slow-burning light. For that, he needed a filament that could resist high temperatures, a bulb to protect it, and a generator to power it. He soon realized that you know, the existing uh, electrical generators of the day, they really were not that efficient at all. So the wizard of Menlo Park invented his own generator. He called this contraption the long-legged Mary Ann. And that's what is so crucial to making a system that will work without costing too much. To drive down the cost even more, he needed a light that would last longer than just a few minutes. If you've got this thin little filament and you get it hot enough to really put light out, it's going to burn. There's your problem. How do we get this little thin filament to glow brightly for a long period of time without immediately burning itself out? Well we've got to take away the thing that makes things burn, and that's oxygen. So Edison had to create the thing that nature abhors, a vacuum. That's what you're trying to do is evacuate the air from uh, the bulb that your filament is in to protect it from the atmosphere. It starts to get complicated really quickly, because it's one thing to say you need uh, a vacuum in the lamp. It's, it's another thing to actually attain that. He went looking for an expert glass blower willing to try something new. You've got to develop something that can actually take the rough and tumble uh, of everyday usage. After striking out again and again, Edison actually placed an ad in the local paper. When they hire uh, Ludwig Bohm, he's a glass blower, and he can blow the delicate bulbs that the filament is going to be inserted in. And everything is done by hand. That meant a lot of trial and error. Yeah, that would have been pretty good job security, working with glass at Menlo Park. The ground around Menlo Park was just filled with broken test tubes and glass. I mean, the, they're not waiting for pickup on Monday. Those things went out the window. Bohm perfected the process. And he teaches other people how to do that as well, so that multiple people can be making these things. And, and this is really crucial. But that fragile bulb was just step one. Edison had to figure out how to suck the air out of it. The filament wouldn't last very long if it was exposed to air. So the vacuum was an important part of the incandescent lamp, and so if you broke it, it became useless. Once again, he was willing to try anything, and everything. Vacuum pump doesn't work well enough. Sends him down to get another one, still not working. He doesn't give up. But what he did was he took the two best pumps of the time and figured out what are the elements of those that make them work best. And he combines all that together to get what at the time was the most efficient vacuum pump in the world. Now Edison had a generator, a bulb, and a vacuum. All he had to do was find a filament. That would be harder than anyone imagined. Well, nobody knows what we're going to use. No one's done this before. And the number of things they've tried are absolutely astonishing. 